pleasure uh, to have this conversation with you at such a crucial moment. Um, and um, I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you in your capacity of um, basically any expertise that's needed in this moment. And maybe if I can ask you a question first in your role as the chair of Gavi, the uh, Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization, because um, there is the saying, never waste a good crisis, mm -hmm. which Hillary Clinton or Winston Churchill supposedly have, um, have uh, coined. <laughs> I think it's Winston Churchill, I don't know. <laughs> he has a lot of kind of inexhaustible treasure of good quotes, right? Yeah. Um, Churchill has. So, um, so is this is this moment of this global pandemic, the COVID-19, is that a moment to go strong against the anti-vax movement and really bring vaccines as a positive solution back on the agenda? What's your view on this? Well, thank you very much for the for for uh, talking to me. It's a really difficult and challenging moment for the world, and it is so sad that we have this pandemic, and we are scrambling for a solution. Um, and so many people are dying all over the world, including on my continent. Um, it, it, it is. Um, I think the the critical thing about this pandemic is that nobody has a solution. There are no therapeutics, uh, you know, there's nothing right now. So in the short term, nothing. But in the longer term, there's also need for a sustainable solution to prevent this. And this is where vaccines come in. So vaccines have never been more important that at, than at this moment. And that is why you see a very strong scramble by researchers, manufacturers, and developers all over the world to try and come up with the vaccine. As I speak, there are about 115 vaccines uh, uh, efforts going on. And this will speak to the point you're raising about anti-vaxxers, that vaccines are seen as so critically important to preventing deaths, preventing the infectious diseases, that I think this is the moment for anyone who thinks that vaccines are a problem and not the solution to change their mind. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we hopefully have a vaccine, maybe in the second half of this year, there are some estimates which are more optimistic, saying maybe early, early autumn, um, there could be something ready um, for, for usage. How can we make sure that it reaches everybody? That it's that it's for, as you say, for all continents, uh, for all groups of population available, also the most vulnerable and the the economically most difficult of populations. How how can we make sure? What's your alliance doing about this? Yeah, that's a very very important question. I hope sincerely we have something sooner. But from most of the scientists, it seems like it might be sometime next year in 2021, and they would consider that even record time. It usually takes uh, even up to 10 years to develop a vaccine. So the world is using technology to really help us uh, um, solve this problem. And the role of Gavi, the, the Vaccine Alliance, which I chair, is really crucial because uh, Gavi is the largest global organization that deploys and delivers vaccines to countries in the developing world. We work in 73 countries. Uh, and we 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 uh, we um, deploy and deliver vaccines to 60% of the world's developing uh, uh, children, to the developing world's children. So that will show you the kind of role we have to play. So it is very important that Gavi uh, should be in the middle uh, and uh, uh, have a prime position with this new COVID-19 vaccine. Why is that? In order to assure equity, first of all, in order to assure volume, producing enough quantities for everyone, this is what Gavi is good at. Gavi has an instrument called the Advanced Market Commitment, which helps to incentivize producers and manufacturers that there will be enough volume and, and payment for them so they can produce the desired quantities for the rest of the world, which is, in this case could be billions of doses. Gavi is able to discuss with the developers and manufacturers for an affordable price um, so that the developing country governments can afford to pay for this. We've had experience in the past with 
one or two other vaccines where they were very expensive and not made in enough quantities, and only the richer countries were able to have them. And it is not right that in this world where we have this technology to save lives, people should be allowed to die just because there's no affordability, there's not enough volume. This is Gavi's job to do, and that's what this organization does very well. Mm -hmm. And under your, uh, under your chairmanship, uh, increasingly so also the awareness in the um, uh, political circles around, around the world, really. Let me ask you or let me address you in your capacity as one of the most senior women politicians um, of Africa, but also globally. You've been Minister of Finance of Nigeria, the largest economy of Africa. You've been Foreign Minister of Nigeria. You were Managing Director of the World Bank. And right now we can see that some countries, like for example Iceland under the leadership of Prime Minister Katrin Jakobs here, or Germany under leadership of Angela Merkel, or New Zealand with Jacinda Ardern as the Prime Minister, they do exceptionally well in managing the COVID-19 crisis in their countries. If we could have a bit of a glimpse in the future, a bit of a maybe um, um, outlook on what could leadership for such a pandemic look like if we would have much more women like yourself, like those women in leadership. Right now, 93% of prime ministers, presidents around the world are men. Um, and those examples of few women, they stand out as positive. So what would the world like? What could a response, would a response be different with more women in leadership? What do you think? Well, I mean, uh, we are all doing uh, things on science base, so uh, it's it's difficult for me to say without a scientific opinion. But I'll tell you what I think. I am very proud of the women you mentioned, the women leaders, and the leadership they are providing in their countries, uh, you know, be it uh, the, uh, New Zealand, Germany, Finland, and others. Um, and even past women presidents, uh, uh, who also in times of crisis, provided decisive leadership. On my continent, there was Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. At the time of the Ebola crisis in West Africa, she was an outstanding leader. So all over the world, we've got women who have shown that they have what it takes. And I, I think I'll say this. I mean, there's a quality uh, of empathy, um, um, recognition of speed and urgency, which these women have deployed courage uh, they have put lives before before money, if you want to put it so crudely. I think people have said, look, you know, even though health and economics are intertwined, but you have to be alive in order to be able to, 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 to earn your living and so on. So they moved very swiftly to put in place the needed measures, even though politically it's not always uh, palatable. But I think those were the right moves. Uh, they were very courageous, even Ellen during the Ebola crisis, in trying to en encourage the community to change behaviors. And I think women are very good at this. So um, I would want that in future, yes, we need more women leaders. I think they can be very good, very decisive, very empathetic uh, to the population. I'm not saying that men are not. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. We also have good men lead, uh, male leaders, but women are very good. Mm -hmm. well, I couldn't, couldn't agree more on that. And women political leaders, of course, strive to um, increase both the numbers as well as the influence of women in political positions, because um, diversity is, is good in any area, um, in any decision making process. And in politics, it's much, much needed. So thank you for, for your assessment and thank you for your words. Let me, let me ask you one final question um, in your maybe then within your capacity as member of the board of Twitter, one of the most important social media companies, uh, social media platforms. And uh, we can see that during this current pandemic, with people being confined at home, with being um, not able to, to exchange information the way they used to, uh, social media has become uh, the main tool for people to, to get informed. So ICT really shows that it's, uh, it's absolutely crucial. It's a fundamental need, basically, in order to get um, the information needed for, for health, but also in order to be, continue to be able to, to communi communicate. So um, how do you see this impacting the future of 
of social media and the transition to ICT usage in many other areas than what we maybe have been doing this so far? I really think that this uh, pandemic, this crisis has transformed the way we communicate radically. And I don't think it will ever be the same. I, I do not know of any other time in, in, in the history up till now that people have been able to reach each other through technology platforms. Uh, all the video conferencing and all the, just imagine what is happening now major international meetings like the spring, the meetings of the World Bank and the IMF of finance ministers, never before done except face to face, are now being done with technology online, with so many finance ministers from more than 180 countries around the world. Imagine the G20 leaders, they held a meeting online, a virtual meeting, all the presidents of the G20 and the finance ministers as well. This has never been done. Then you see ordinary, normal working. People are working from home using all these technology platforms. Even television is now interviewing people. They don't have to come into the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, as you and I are doing now through Skype, this is on. And finally, I want to say online learning. Universities and schools all over the world are now using online to do their classes. It brings me to one point I want to make which is the fact that we must not let poorer countries be left behind. In this technology revolution, there's one thing that is clear. In developed countries, there are poor communities, even in the United States, where children do not have laptops or iPads or any means of getting online or mobile phones. The same on my continent in Africa uh, or in parts of Asia uh, where there are poorer communities. We must do something because I feel that the world has changed. And from now, we're going to be doing so much with social media, with online platforms. We're going to be communicating. And it is visionary. People like Jack Dorsey, who saw that this is the way that the world will be having future conversations and dialogues. We're visionary. I think this is going to be more so. We must find a way to make sure that our children in vulnerable communities, in disadvantaged communities, are not left behind in this revolution by giving them uh, the means, the, 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 the phones, the platforms, the iPads to, to use to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, indeed, and I think uh, it can be a huge opportunity to close the education gap as well if, if the long walks to school, if the long um, transport times are no longer hindering children, especially girls, from going to schools if they can learn at home and that becomes the new normal that yes. can be a huge opportunity you, you you really got it you know that's what i was dreaming about that you know for those communities where girls don't have the opportunity if we could get indeed laptops into their hands ipads very inexpensive iphones or mobile phones sorry um they can learn and mm -hmm. there will no longer be that barrier mm -hmm. indeed. <laughs> Well, thank you so very much for your insights and your time. It was hugely interesting and educational talking to you. And I'm sure people will enjoy listening to your words when looking at the video later on. Um, thank you and keep up the strong and good work. We all have to. Thank you so, so much for doing it. And I wish you, you will stay safe during this difficult time. And thank you to the Women Political Leaders Platform. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.